I'm Cameron Munter, President and CEO of the East West Institute in New York. The new year has begun, we have a new administration, and we have a new set of problems, many people believe, a set of problems challenging in a way that few problems have been in the past. I've just returned from Davos in Switzerland, where many of the global elites have spent time discussing what those challenges might be and in which ways the different leaders of the world might address them. There is a kind of disorder that no one can really figure out. In a sense, the old world has died as they see it, but the new world has not yet been born. So this was the underlying feeling there. The more concrete result of Davos was the sense of the emergence of China filling a vacuum that had been left by the United States. It's not fair to say that the Trump administration stayed away. This was, after all, the same time as the administration's inauguration. Nonetheless, there was very much the sense that President Xi of China was the main character in talking about globalization and the defense of what globalization has caused, and that there was very little understanding or presence among the Americans. It was unprecedented that President Xi had such a platform. It was, in fact, the first time that the president of China has attended Davos. Much of the language that he used was the language uh, of a stirring defense of globalization that most of the creators of globalization today might not use. Today, other leaders would temper it by saying, yes, but let's remember what globalization has left behind. Xi was very open about this, and I think this demonstrates a point that I think is very important in our understanding of China and the world. China is clearly coming out in defense of a world order under which it has benefited hugely. It is not a question of China trying to break rules. It's a question of China becoming the definer of rules that exist. So this was very, very different than what some people are saying about China. From the public statements, what we have is not only the question of a rising China or a, uh, a perhaps a declining America, a Thucydides trap or anything of that sort. There is a very different language being used, a very different vision of what a nation should see as its goals. The Chinese language is the language of win-win the language of everyone will benefit if all of us will work together. A lot of emphasis on transnational issues like climate change, a recommitment to the Paris agreements. A lot of emphasis on the need for rules and working out under rules rather than going one's own way. This contrasts with, I think, the inaugural address of President Trump in which he emphasized more than once America first. It doesn't mean to those of us uh, who have worked in diplomacy in the United States, that this is necessarily hostile to foreign countries. It need not be, just America being first, need not necessarily be everyone else suffers. But the language doesn't at least try to come up with a common set of goals. It comes up with a focused set of goals for the United States. So an enormous contrast in style that one fears at Davos could be an enormous difference of substance. Well, the key issues that people wanted to address at Davos, the key way in which people were trying to address the globalization topics, fell into two categories. One was a kind of a list of things. What about Russia? What about China? What about India? What about the rise of populism? In other words, a litany of issues, all of which seem to be unsteady in the structures that we've had over the last decades. I would argue there was another level at which people were looking at issues, which was a difficulty defining the agenda. That is, the agenda itself, not the list of things, but the agenda is, are issues going to be national rather than transnational or multinational? Are issues going to be common to different countries or unique to each country? This reflects what, in a general sense, people refer to as populism and the turning inward, especially of the advanced economies uh, of Europe and the United States. But the difficulty in setting the common agenda makes the expression of policies that are useful, something that people in Davos want to do, to make suggestions of policies that can be useful to the people who make policy, made it particularly difficult this year because there was no agreement on exactly what the agenda was 
so that when you talk about China, when you talk about Russia, when you talk about other issues, no agreement about what to say about them. I wouldn't describe the mood at Davos this year as positive, negative, or neutral. There was evidence of all these. There were people who believed that things will work out, that the institutions of the United States are sufficient to uh, curb the excesses that some fear the Trump administration might have. There are pessimists who think that the entire world order is in a state of collapse. But mainly, rather than having certainty about pessimism or certainty about optimism, there was confusion. There was uncertainty. There was a feeling that the setting of goals was not taking place, that something was missing. And so in looking for the path that we would follow, people felt bereft. And so the feeling in Davos was, most of all, that we didn't know what would happen and that events might happen to us rather than this global lead at Davos happening to events.